saran wrap. Well, at some point down the line, you're going to have your 7D or your 5D. You're going to be shooting outside or shooting something with high detail. And what you're going to get is an artifact. You're going to see aliasing all over, more color fringing. And you're going to wonder, what do I do about this? Well, here is a two cent solution to a big problem. Now, it's not something you'd use all the time and there's certainly a lot of different things that you can try or brands of saran wrap that you can try. But I've used this and what this does and how I use it is I will get a really sharp lens like my 50 millimeter Nikon Prime. I will stick it behind the lens and then mount it on the 7D. So way to impress clients, isn't it? Now you can trim off the excess. Now, depending on the strength of the saran wrap that you use, it will change the picture accordingly. So why do I use this? Uh, would you use this? It, it kind of looks like putting Vaseline on lens in a way. Um, with at least this saran wrap and it, you don't lose any resolution. Uh, over what the video is recording you do get a haze on the white highlights and i can show you a sample of a resolution chart to show you the difference it's most useful in a situation where you'd want to change that that extra sharpness into a blur on the highlights now there's another filter i, I don't have one yet i'm waiting to get it it is called a, a cap rock now the cap rock filter reduces the resolution and it comes in several strengths. Now I've seen a lot of posts and a lot of people have been testing these on the internet and it seems like the cap rock 2.0 is the best filter to use for, for most wide lenses. So from the samples that I've seen of that, I would probably recommend it. As soon as I get one, I'll make a video and, and test it and show you the samples of how it works. At this point, if you're going to get one for a shoot coming up, I would say it's probably safest to go with the 2.0 from all the samples that I've seen. That's with the 7D. With, with the 5D, I'm not sure. There's not really a, a great, perfect filter that I've seen for that yet. Um, certainly, if you're in a rush, you want to test this out, test it with different brands of saran wrap, different thicknesses, different weights, if you will, and it, it won't cost you more than a few dollars. Certainly, if you're on the run, you can, you can test something like this. It's not something you want to use in the long term, though. So there are a lot of different filters and I'll be testing them and then updating you on what might work best. Another good tip is that when you're shooting something really, really sharp, you can kind of push the focus a little bit further than what you in, intend to shoot. Or if it's a background, you can, you can pull that a little bit and you can, you can make it slightly blurry. Actually, sometimes that slight blur is better than the over sharpness of a, of a wall with lots of moray or like a road surface with lots of color fringing. Um, you can definitely experiment with that. And with those, it's easier to control depth of focus with a, a larger aperture. So that's another point to keep in mind. So right now the, uh, and isn't this pretty, right now the aliasing issue is the biggest problem with shooting with the 7D or the 5D. There is another solution, however, and we'll be going over these lenses at, at some point in the future. And that's anamorphic lens. On the channel of Kara Wing, he has samples of using an anamorphic lens, actually two different brands of anamorphic lenses with his 5D. And what those do is they compress the image down and it actually helps a lot with that aliasing. So that is definitely another, it's actually a better path than what I've shown you now. Um, but it's hard to, I mean, you're not gonna have a lot, whole lot of choices in variety of focal lengths for anamorphic lenses. Mm -hmm.